Hey, are you a creative ninja? Like, do you produce art all the time? Do you just bust out creative projects like crazy? Are you a crafter or an artist at heart? Well, you're welcome here. But if you just saw that and panic kind of arose and anxiety kind of hit you right about here or maybe here and you went, no, I'm not creative. Good news, you're in the right spot too. In fact, I love it when I get to see people who say, I'm not creative. Learn to be creative again. I'm Kimberly Freilinger, and I am the teacher and creator of the Messy Princess Academy, and one of my favorite things to teach about is art journaling. And we're just gonna go through a mini class that's gonna get you art journaling today. Mm-hmm, yeah, I promise. Because art journaling is less about art and more about the heart. And I know that might sound a little cheesy, but it is so true and nothing could be more true. So if you were the one in the group that I talked about that was panicking about being creative, or maybe you thought, no, 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 I clicked on the wrong video, I'm not creative, this isn't for me. I'm glad you hung in here because this is exactly the right place for you. You see, most of us, grew up willing to be creative when we were little and somewhere along the way somebody told us that our creations were not good enough or downright bad or got ignored and so we stopped being vulnerable because creativity takes vulnerability and we just learned it wasn't safe to create or maybe we were told, you know, you're just not really the creative type, you're more logical. See, we've got this whole right brain, left brain thing going on in neuroscience where right brain is creative and left brain people are more analytical. But what if we're both, because people, most of us have a right brain and a left brain, right? Okay, so doesn't take a brain surgeon to figure that one out. So we have logic and we have creativity. We all have both. It's just a percentage of how much of each is more dominant in our lives. So if we all have a right brain, which is the creative side of our brain, and we were all created human beings made in the image of God, that means we are all creative at our core. So I think that being creative is not only something fun to do or something uh, whimsical to do or something um, like an art journaling to express yourself through. I really think being creative is fundamental to your mental and physical health and even spiritual too. Now, not all creativity has to look the same. I have a friend who's a baker and she writes cookbooks and she posts pictures that just nearly make me a slobbery mess on Facebook. She creates not only yummy food, but beautiful food. I don't even know how to explain how a cupcake is beautiful, but her cupcakes are beautiful, okay? I have a friend who's a pianist and loves to play the piano and can just sit down and bang out songs. That's creative too, and that's beautiful. I have a bunch of friends who are writers and their words are almost like a song as you read them. That is creativity. I'm not so good at any of that. I mean, I can bake and make something kind of cute. I might still be able to play hot crust buns on the piano. Not sure I can. And writing, although I am a writer, it is a struggle for me. It is not my favorite thing to do. So I don't consider myself a really good creative writer either, but I love being creative. And what I've learned is that to break the creative wound, we have to break the creative rules. So the only rule about art journaling is that there are no rules. <laughs> See how I did that? See, I really like to embrace the messy side of life and really embrace breaking the rules. And so art journaling does so many different things for us that it just lights me up and I wanna share that with you. So I promised that we'd get you art journaling today and how in the world are we gonna do that? Because you might be thinking, I don't have art supplies. I don't even know what you're talking about. What's art journaling? I can't draw, I don't do art. Remember I said I wasn't creative? Okay, first of all, to start, all you need is a piece of paper and something to write with. 
It can be a pen, a pencil, a crayon, a piece of sidewalk chalk. I don't care. Grab some crayons from your kids or from the next door neighbors. You probably want to knock on their door first and ask if you can borrow them. That's probably a good thing. But <laughs> see if you can borrow a writing utensil if you don't have one. And if all you have is a pencil or a ballpoint pen, that works too. We're going to keep this super simple because simple is where we can start. I'll admit, I'm not a big fan of baby steps. When somebody tells me to do something really little, I can't hardly believe that it's gonna make any kind of change in my life. But I have learned that baby steps do get you to your goals. They really do. So we're gonna start small with this art journaling idea. So what you need is a piece of paper, and even if all you have is a notebook with lined paper, that's okay too. Remember, we're not getting fancy about this. So you're gonna have your paper and your writing utensil. And if you have blank paper and you have um, maybe a collection of markers or crayons or colored pencils, sure, grab those, that would be awesome. But what you're gonna do is you're going to take whatever supplies you have, keep it super simple, and I want you, when I'm done talking, to click below and on the button that says, yes, I want to start. Because what that's gonna do is send you an email from me that gives you five different art journaling prompts. And they cover five different emotions. And so today, what I want you to do once you get that email is I want you to grab your paper, Grab your pen or your marker or your crayon, and I want you to look through those five prompts and find one that fits an emotion that you're having today or that you've had recently that's still kind of stirring in your mind or in your heart. We know through neuroscience too that naming our emotions really helps take the power out of them. And we also know that putting things on paper helps take the power out of them. So let's say for an example, you've been anxious. Take the prompt for anxiety. And what I want you to do is, are you ready for this? I want you to scribble or doodle. Because if I say the word draw, guess what? Half of you are gonna panic and bail on me. I don't want you to panic and bail on me. We're not drawing. You're not even allowed to. Okay, well, if, if you wanna draw, you can draw but I want you to doodle or scribble on your paper. And here's how this is gonna work. So let's say you choose one of those prompts, but you're like, okay, she told me to scribble based on this prompt. What, what do I do now? Well, some of the things you can do to start is maybe pick a color that goes with that emotion or that prompt. Really, this is where you kind of get to think outside the box, or you get to kind of stop thinking and just start listening to yourself. For some people, emotions already have colors associated with them, so pick that. Or maybe emotions have shapes, or maybe emotions can be drawn in certain types of lines, or certain types of circles or dots, or patterns. Start with that. So this is gonna be really simple, but what I want you to do is pick one of those prompts and get it down on paper however you can. And I want you to do this for five days and I want to know what you think. So feel free to write to me and tell me what this process is like for you, what art journaling has done for you, what these five days of scribbling has done for you. I want you to go through the five prompts and even if they don't feel like they fit, try them anyway. Just remember a time that you had felt like that and use that prompt to doodle or scribble something down on a piece of paper. This is based on neuroscience and psychology, guys. This is also based off of the fact that we are created by a God, so we can be creative. And I think it's almost a spiritual discipline to be creative in some way. So I'm so excited for you to join this journey with me in art journaling. It's, it's honestly a technique that has really changed my life. And I wouldn't be so excited about it if I didn't know 
that it carries the results I know it can carry. And it can carry those results for the perfectionist who thinks they have to have a perfect little piece of art or for the person who wants to give up before they start because they know they're just not going to be able to do anything good enough. Okay? We're all in this together. So if you want to share your work on social media so that I can find it easily, use the hashtag messy art journaling because we're going to do this in a messy way, right? And life is messy and emotions are messy. And my name is the modern mess princess. So I like messes. So hashtag messy art journaling and put it up on Instagram or throw up your pictures on Facebook. Take a picture of what you're doing. I want to see how this is impacting you. And I'm so excited to know that you're going to find some freedom in this. I promise that. All right. Remember, click below right now to say, yes, I want to start because we're going to start art journaling today. All right. Thanks, you guys, and I cannot wait to see how you embrace this new art journaling journey. Bye for now.